let's talk about how we view ourselves at church. Now, at church, when you think about serving, do you view yourself as a renter or an owner? Now, you might be thinking, what in the world am I talking about? But this really leads us to our next principle in operations, and that is the principle, take ownership. Our desire is that you would take ownership in your local church. Now, let's get back to this idea, this question, are you a renter or an owner? Now, if you rent your house, think about the connection that you have to your house. You might love your house. It might be very meaningful to you. You might enjoy your time there, but you're just a renter, right? And so if some grass dies, eh, that's not really your problem ultimately. If the roof leaks, I mean, you're a renter, you're not an owner, but if you're an owner of the house, your grass dies, you wanna fix that grass. Your roof leaks, you're gonna fix that roof immediately. Well, hopefully, right? You're gonna fix that roof immediately so it doesn't do more damage to your investment. Well, what we hope is that at church, you begin to view yourself as an owner, that you're not just a renter who kind of comes and goes, but you're an owner at your church, you're invested, that you are motivated by mission and duty, and you have a sense of responsibility that even transcends the job description that you're given when you join your ministry team. Let's think about what it means to be an owner. First of all, owners take initiative. An owner sees what needs to be done and does it. They don't wait for someone else to pick up the slack. They don't say, hey, not my job. They're the owner. If they don't do it, maybe no one's gonna do it. And so at church, we need to start to think like owners, especially on the team that we serve on. For example, let's say that you are a guitar player and you walk into the bathroom and you notice that the trash is overflowing and there's no soap. What's your response? Not my job, I gotta play guitar. That's a terrible response. That's a renter's response. An owner says, hey, this is my church. These are my people. Maybe they're, maybe somebody called in sick on the clean team or you know, maybe everyone's just overwhelmed. There's a lot of people here on this Sunday. And so you're gonna take the responsibility to take out the trash and you're gonna refill the soap or you're gonna alert somebody and, and help them refill the soap. That's your job because you're an owner. Or let's say that you are an usher and you know that it's your responsibility to man the door and make sure people are ushered in and you see a kid's church worker and he or she is just overwhelmed with crafts and they're taking them to the classroom and they're falling apart. You don't say, wow, somebody should help her, but not my job, I gotta stay at this door. No, you take the initiative, you help that person. You see, that's what it means to be an owner. Take the initiative, don't wait to be told to do something. Look for problems that you can solve at your church. And when you do that, you're gonna be a huge blessing to everyone else around you. Owners work hard. If you're a business owner, you must work hard because you want your company to survive and to grow and make a profit. Well, at church, we need to have the responsibility of ownership and that means that we are gonna take responsibility for the church, right? We're gonna wanna work hard. We're gonna wanna see the church to succeed. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. An owner of a church works with energy and enthusiasm. An owner of a church serves trying to serve excellently, not trying to just get by. You know, they show up on time. They show up prepared because they're an owner. An owner understands that the one that they are ultimately serving is the Lord. It doesn't matter what their job description is. Their ultimate boss or the, the one that they ultimately report to is the Lord. And so they work hard for God. Owners are humble. Now, you might be thinking not of a house owner, but maybe of a business owner. And you might think a business owner, if a business owner is successful, they may not be very humble. They might be kind of arrogant. They might be a little full of themselves and what they've achieved. But really, an owner in a church is humble because they understand the big picture. They understand what the church is really all about. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. You see, at church, we're not serving to make ourselves look good. We're serving to honor God by helping other people. We are others focused, and that is humbling. It's humbling to say, hey, it's not about me and my agenda and what I wanna do, but I'm just here to help this team, and I'm here to help all the teams at the church. Use your freedom to serve one another in love. Owners realize that they are free in Christ to serve each other, to serve the church, and to serve people in the community. Owners in a church are motivated by humility 
They're filled with love, which is never bossy and never arrogant. And so an owner has this humble attitude that says, hey, I just want to help whatever you need me to do. And so I hope that when it comes to your team, you'll take ownership, that you won't do the minimum. You won't just kind of just do the, the minimum of what you're asked to show up just barely on time, maybe a few minutes late, but that you will take ownership, you'll work hard, you'll be prepared, and all of that will be motivated by an attitude of humility.